Well, the current loop itself creates a B field just from the current flowing in it. And according to the right-hand rule, each side of the current loop will generate a B field going downwards. You can see all these loops go down in the center of the loop, meaning that they all reinforce each other and the B field is stronger in the middle of this loop than outside of it. So in summary, the current flowing in the current loop serves two functions. One, it gives uh, the projectile, or our metallic blanket, so a continuous supply of current. And two, it creates the B applied. Which, when combined with one, the first thing here, it generates the Lorentz force on the projectile. Now, before we think we've come up with a perfect solution here for launching our projectile, do you remember the conversation we had at the beginning of today about a moving conductor in a magnetic field? In our scenario here, we have a moving conductor, the projectile, in a magnetic field. So the electrons in the projectile are going to feel a Lorentz force, right? Just like they did for the satellite. So the Lorentz force here, F Lorentz, is minus E U crossed with B. So this Lorentz force will move the electrons in what direction? Let's see. It'll move towards the bottom of the projectile. And uh, that will give the end, that end of the projectile, a net negative charge relative to the other end of the projectile. And we can quantify the potential induced across the ends of the projectile, just like we did earlier, V induced, is L, the length of the projectile, is E dot DL, which is equal to L, uh, integral over the length of the projectile of u crossed with b dot dl. Now the electrons, uh, the, the projectile is part of a conductive loop. So when the electrons reach the bottom of the projectile, they'll just keep moving around the loop. And in other words here, the moving current carrying projectile is a generator, just like we saw for the satellite. It was a generator, it created current. But in this case, the current it's creating opposes the current that we already have. So the current is defined by the direction opposite to the electrons. So we're going to get a current I, I'll call that generator current, in the opposite direction as our current from our current our source. All right, so we have I gen, and on this side we'll have I gen, and of course a uh, current creates its own magnetic field. So now we're going to get a magnetic field that also opposes, I'll call it B2, which goes in the opposite direction as our original B loop. This generation of B2 in the opposite direction of B loop is called Lenz's law. Here you can see a better diagram where we have all the currents, both the currents labeled and also both of the B fields that are labeled. And so basically what this does, this I a generated current does, is that it reduces the total current flowing in the wire loop, which in turn is going to reduce the amount of force that our projectile will experience. So in other words, we're not going to get a perfect conversion here of electric energy to mechanical energy. Uh, there's, a, a, there's some loss associated with it. This type of launching system is called a rail gun. We can use this rail gun to launch a projectile like a metallic blanket, and then we can use magnetotorquers to steer the mag metallic blanket towards and around any hostile satellite. Before you get out your in-class project notebooks to make a note about the railgun, I want to relate what we've been talking about here to Faraday's law. 
Earlier, we showed that we can calculate V induced by integrating over L the length of the projectile, and we can integrate U crossed with B dot DL. But we also mentioned that the projectile is part of a conductive loop. So when the electrons reach the bottom of the projectile, they'll just keep moving around the loop. So as a result, the electrons will keep migrating until they until we get a V induced here across the resistor. So with the direction of the current here, we'll have plus here and minus there. This means that if we define an equivalent electric field around the loop, think of some of the equations we wrote earlier uh, where we related the electric field and U cross B, the length and the Coulomb force, then this, if we integrate over L here, a closed loop around the wire loop, and we integrate E, the equivalent electric field for this loop, dot DL, we're going to say this is our first equation for V induced. We have a second equation for V induced, and this was written by Michael Faraday. He showed through experiments that we can also relate V induced to the changing magnetic flux through the loop. So this is minus <clears throat> integrating over S dB through the loop dt and dotted with n hat. So we're looking at n hat is normal to the surface of the loop. So that's all the B flux going through the loop. And the minus sign here comes from Lenz's law. This is our second equation that we have for V induced. And so if we equate these two equations that we just came up with, then we get the closed integral loop around the wire, integral around the wire loop of E equivalent dot DL is equal to the right side of the above equation dB loop dt dot n hat ds. Now let's take a step back and look at this equation. Does this equation bother you at all? Maybe if you relate the left side of this equation to something that you learned in circuits class?